Uh, okay, hello everybody. I'm Tom, uh, Thomas Santakalle. I hail from Finland also. Uh, I've been working on a, a similar product on my own with a couple of friends. They are international ones. Some are from UK, some are from South America, and uh, um, some come from Australia. Uh, I have uh, basically um, the idea has been to develop a, um, a block lattice layer with hash graph, which is a little bit uh, similar to IOTA, but it's not a coin, and uh, a palette of different types of digital contracts for individual applications. Uh, the purpose of my project was originally to make a, a retail energy provider composed of uh, decentralized infrastructure. Basically, everybody who has already bought their own hardware can install a, a data card. I'm using a, a Portuguese startup to make the data card. I'm buying it from them. And uh, then connect uh, with the hash graph and together uh, as a group uh, sell uh, the electricity to the consumer market or uh, to um, to electricity exchange or uh, whatever and um, well it has been in in a garage for um, some time I studied uh, out with uh, a hardware kit of my own in 2015 and the product just uh, sprouted out um, to um, the scope of uh, delivering a distributed infrastructure uh, on its own basically uh, especially after uh, the release of uh, IOTA I started finding out if there's another option, I found Hashgraph. And then I found that in Hashgraph, you can actually already do uh, ERC type digital contracts. So I was thinking that, okay, it would be very practical to develop a distributed hardware infrastructure. Um, regarding if it's gonna be an ICO of its own, I don't know yet, but at least I've got, um, um, an almost ready uh, minimum viable product uh, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of a platform and uh, uh, firmware. That sounds that sounds really cool, Tom. Uh, so, in your your product that you're building, as I understand it correctly, you can use any standard PV panel that produces the electricity, and and your widget is the net meter. Is it connected to this or the inverter? Yeah, basically, um, I'm using a card from uh, Ion Seed, which is a oh. Portuguese startup. Uh, I met those guys in the KRC climate accelerator where I took part in 2015 and then the following year 2016 so they thought about blockchain we started discussing and now they have as, a, as their own commercial product they have a server-based product but the card does support blockchain on several counts uh, I thought originally I'd put just stick it into the inverter in the uh, RS485 port the serial port, and uh, that that should be it because the card itself supports uh, Wi-Fi and, and, and 3G. So um, it would be able to connect with the internet uh, and uh, support uh, a light node on, on the Hashgraph network. Uh, but basically, like in theory, the energy source could be any. It could be wind, it could be even a central power station, but the point is that in this kind of network, you have a parallel system to the electricity grid. Now you have a data grid, and 
uh, you can create products on top of that data grid. Because now you have the information coming in in real time. Okay, that, that sounds really, really interesting. So uh, just a really brief introduction on what we're planning on doing on the PV side. So not regarding blockchain or anything, just what we're going to do for solar. Uh, it's basically a rooftop contract. Uh, so we provide the PV panel on top of the rooftop of any client. And uh, they then now buy the electricity from us directly. So we send all the electricity or most of the electricity to the persons or the, the companies needing the electricity directly. All the excess energy we can sell to the main grid. However, that is not as profitable, um, at least in, in Central Europe. Uh, of course, that always depends a little bit, but that's basically it. Um, and we have some projects that are, or that would be one rather large part, uh, let's say, shy of 750 megawatts uh, uh, kilowatts uh, so 0 0.75 megawatt peak um, and there would be four different companies uh, logistics company and, and some other retail companies that need the electricity and we were we we're basically looking on how can we do a, a sort of micro grid for this really small community of just a few uh, electricity consumers um, what do you think about that and is your project maybe uh, in this area? Yeah, it could be implemented. Now, I've been following uh, it, like this company PowerLegit that everybody knows. As we all know, it began with a microgrid itself in Australia. They had a retirement community and they built an isolated, like an off-grid solar as their test network. This can be done. But with a bit lattice type of system like IOTA, RIBLOX, IOT chain and Hashcraft, uh, the network can be isolated, but once it connects with the main chain, it will update itself automatically. Now with a blockchain, you'd need to do a hard fork to achieve that. Now that's the technical advantage of uh, having a bit lattice. Uh, as the uh, layer between the hardware and uh, the actual token that runs the product. Now the token can be any, it's agnostic. You can uh, uh, lease the panels themselves. Uh, you can uh, install a car charger and rent it out. Uh, you can uh, share uh, some of your power as a uh, uh, peak uh, discharge for the grid uh, and then uh, run an AI separately uh, controlling the member nodes that join it. It's just that the bit lattice gives you the freedom to define the product. Uh, now PowerLedger is similar but it runs as a token currently on the Ethereum network uh, which is like a little bit limited because you still need to work uh, your con your product out with within the constraints of the technology. If Ethereum gets plasma that makes it run uh, theoretically unlimited number of transactions per second, it's still um, limited by being a blockchain instead of a block lattice because you cannot form a separate community and then later connect it, you would need to do a hard fork. And uh, that, that's a limitation. You always need to be connected with the main chain, right? Uh, that's right. That's right. And in order to update it, if you have a blackout and you have uh, uh, the local grid running separately, uh, if you have a blackout, you cannot connect with the network. Therefore, your software layer goes down. With the bit lattice, is different. It can work locally. Uh, uh, the most similar uh, company doing what you were planning to do is another ICO that is upcoming. It's called Restart Energy in Romania. And they have a local solar installer as a partner. So, uh, what they are saying is that they have a, a token and then you have 
energy storage, and then you have a trading platform on the blockchain, restartenergy.io. But yeah, I mean, if you just add a bit lattice, like below between the hardware and your contract, then uh, it, it can, um, in, in my opinion, that was my practical idea, that it would add um, flexibility in, in, in designing the product. Because now you, you can connect and disconnect the hardware. You can run a local grid uh, in an off-grid situation, or you can run it on the public grid. And uh, you're free to design whatever type of product on top of it. It's agnostic to whatever digital contract you have or what kind of power source you have or how they're connected because it's itself a PV network. That's that's really interesting. And, and what would you set on the blockchain itself? So what would be the transaction? Would it be the, the so what exactly would you put on the blockchain or handcraft depending on what you use? ERC um, twenty twenty one or seven twenty five contract. Okay. You can just transfer that uh, the data from the uh, contract uh, into the Ethereum mainnet. And then if, if we use the ERC20 contract, then the token that represents one kilowatt hour of, of produced energy, of consumed it energy? Anything. It, it can be a rental contract, or it can be a utility contract, it can be anything. You define it. Okay. Thank you, Tom. That was very informative and very technical. We, we definitely need a somebody like you in the team and we are hurting at the moment for for technical uh, know-how and you clearly have been working on this and and uh, you have expertise so happy to have you here so what kind of uh, experience do you guys have in doing online marketing and also uh, what is your like do you have any reference projects you've done So um, I had an online shop running, um, but I I sold I sold the online shop about two months ago, and now Jonas and me um, run another online shop at the moment, um, and I have a, a lot of experience in T-shirt selling, um, Facebook ads, and Instagram marketing stuff. So, yeah. Uh, experience, do you have any references and how much turnover are these projects doing? Um, I, I have no reference because I always was self-employed after my uh, apprenticeship. So um, I did this only for me and had no, had no, no boss or something like this. Um, but I, I, um, I have, uh, I'm self-employed and I had a, another company uh, running and yes, we, we mostly do um, this, this shirt business. We, we, we sold shirts um, via Facebook and Amazon and so on. And so, so I'm, I'm like, a, yes, um, I have not um, five years experience, but um, I started this about one and a half year ago and, and gained experience over this time. So I'm wondering how much the project, like what's the budget you've been working with and uh, what kind of uh, AB marketing strategies have you guys been doing? AB testing, these type things, like what, how much budget do you work with and what's your uh, input and all from cash and what's your output that you put in? to the project. That's both the question for you and for uh, Jonas. Jonas, do, do you? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so the so conclusion, I was also self-employed um, after my uh, Deutsche Bank studies. And we started an online shop, but this is also not um, very old. So we started last year. And in this case, we worked with uh, rather budgets, of course, at least 
was a small startup. And um, my knowledge is also based more in the design part. So working uh, with websites, of course, of the design part aspects and also social media um, competences in uh, the design parts. So, um, oh, to, go ahead. To, to be honest, I, I don't want to um, say my say my numbers, but um, it, it was like um, maybe 30% um, costs and, and yes, 70% uh, um, mar margin. I don't know how to say it like this. Um, yes. All good points. Marketing is important, definitely, and we want to reach a, a global audience. Um, however, we decided that we do not want to do a, a one-time big token sale where we raise uh, like 30 million or, or whatever. Um, simply because it takes time to build PV panels and uh, we don't want to uh, raise too much money that we cannot productively spend and reinvest. Um, so therefore we decided to do uh, rather several smaller rounds of uh, concurring funding um, and uh, so that we can uh, naturally grow uh, and only have as much money as we really need. Um, and thus we decided to do a first MVP, minimal, minimum viable product, um, that we first raise with full equity. And then later uh, we can do a, or we want to do a token sale of roughly between 500,000 euros and 1 million euros, roundabout. Um, and with this, with this initial money, uh, we want to build the first, uh, we can do up to four to five megawatts, uh, depending on the loan debt financing that we can get with the equity. Um, so that is quite uh, quite a bit. And we can start repaying investors on the first round the month after the project uh, is, goes live. So that is nice. And then once we've proven that the MVP works, that everything works, that the technology works, we want to do further rounds um, as we see fit with as much capital as we then need. Um, however, uh, we want to do, uh, or, or we have the possibility of doing, uh, as I said earlier, 30 megawatts this year, um, and possibly much more. Um, so we have the potential, but we want to do this the correct way and not bite off too much that we can chew, um, but rather yeah, do it smart. Let me add to that. So, uh, so what we are planning here right now, as 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 of now, what we need now is uh, to have the minimum viable products, which, which, which we can market to a so-called angel investor so we can get on the roadshow, so we can get the word out. That's pretty much what we're trying to do, like a, let's call it a, a limited pre-ICO for accredited investors or something like that. And uh, after we kick off, uh, after we actually kick off, the plan is to fund each project separately. So we would first lock in the project and uh, make make the negotiations and then uh, start up the funding like a, like a Kickstarter style. So we would only raise money enough to build that project, you know, expenses and everything included, of course. So we are now looking looking to raise like multi million at least not in the beginning. Of course, it's, uh, it it scales pretty much in uh, infinitely if there's uh, if, there, if there's demand. We can just make keep making uh, subcontracts and uh, keep right. We can even run uh, like parallel ICOs like small token generation events because we're talking about equity token here. And so, so whoever would uh, participate in the token sale would, would then receive our token, which is a, a token of the, of the whole um, network of power plants. So you would actually own those power plants by owning those tokens. So that's pretty much the uh, outline for the minimal viable product. And all, everything else is, is uh, uh, down the line in the milestones. Yeah, that's pretty much it about this like scaling infinitely thing it's it if you are doing these on, on individual projects that's not uh very scalable actually what what i'm seeing is uh and one of my questions are with this thing is uh your each individual project as in say you're putting them in in a building or what do you mean by each individual project like like is that like you're doing uh, one city and you've you've already gone to each of the building owners and or are you doing it 
like by like building or like what what do you mean by each individual project that's my question okay let me let me clarify so we have something called uh i don't know if you had the time to check our one pager but we have a, a idea of this pipeline that we will fill with uh so-called pre-approved projects that we know that we can do that we know that as as long as we have the funding we can do so there's demand already for this and uh, the only thing is the funding so the pipeline will fills up with projects and then uh, we, we raise tokens for those projects. So as long as there's, there's demand for uh, this kind of like solar plants, and now we're talking about, like Max said in the beginning, like uh, retrofitting to existing buildings, so like small and medium-sized projects. So I don't see any reason why we should limit ourselves to uh, just small projects in the future either, but that's how we kick off. So what I mean by infinite scaling is that, you know, of course the operation has uh, a lot of uh, challenges in, in scaling, obviously, but it's a positive uh, problem in that, that, you know, there's uh, more demand than there's supply. So that's what I, I meant. Precisely. Okay. There, there, are, there are two different ways we could go on doing this. Either we say, okay, we raise new funds for each rooftop uh, or each uh, just park that we want to build, uh, which would be, or might be quite tedious. Um, what we could do on the other hand is saying, okay, we raised this initial pool of capital. Uh, let's say just for argument's sake, 1 million euros worth uh, in BTC or Ether um, or any other cryptocurrency that is useful. Um, and then we let the token holders vote on which project to do with, this, with those funds. Um, so the funds are locked up until the, uh, some form of consensus is reached by the token holders on which project we should do. And as soon as we have that, the funds that we've already raised now get used in the uh, well, for, to fund the project. Um, would just be a bit easier uh, to batch the investment rather than doing it completely just for each project. Uh, but again, those are uh, mainly re regulatory reasons uh, that we have to discuss here. And depending on how tough and how thorough the requirements are for doing an, a funding round, I think we uh, then have to decide on what to do. Um, if we can get this done quite easily and quite cheaply with uh, fast possibilities, um, especially if we have easier requirements under, under let's say, 5 million euros per funding round, uh, then we can do several of them. Um, but as I think that it's going to be quite tough to get every all, all the regulation uh, ready and uh, getting all that stuff done. Uh, I think batching the investment uh, and the projects might be a good way to go. But again, that's it's work in progress. So feel free to add your comments. Yeah, of course, we are open to all suggestions. If you're focusing on, I think then if you're going to batch things, then like focusing on a city and then going... <laughs> Sorry, hold on. Sorry for a moment. Yeah, th that's a good question. Uh, if, if what cities or what countries do we even want to start? Um, the company that we use for building and operating the PV plants is located in Liechtenstein in, in Central Europe, and uh, this is a base where we can do business with pretty much everyone worldwide. Um, we will focus our efforts in the early stages on Central Europe. Um, mainly Germany, um, but we also have possibilities of doing, um, let's say, uh, England, Italy, uh, Romania, uh, Czechia. Czechia. Uh, there are interesting countries, and we don't have to be limited to just one city. Um, we'll just go wherever we can find projects. That's pretty much it. So I was just thinking that... Um you know, you need pretty hardcore sales to essentially get people to let you install the panels on their roofs. We, and we already got that. Um, so we are working here with a sales team of 150 people uh, that, oh. we, that we could use that focus on PV pan panels in general. Um, so Ooh. they can... Guys, they, like what's the, are you outsourcing it or how does this work? Um, we have the possibility of using those uh, or th this team. This would be uh, outsourcing if we decide to do that. However, we don't have to um, because we have quite good connections in this uh, area ourselves. Um, we can, I think, fund at least 10 megawatts uh, without any help from, from any outside uh, company like, like in the next three months. Um, that's easily, I, th I think we have 
enough projects to do. Um, so I don't think we need any of, the, of like uh, those uh, retail companies. However, we have the possibility. I don't think that we'll need it, but we'll see. Yeah, again, I, I think that's a scaling thing. Like uh, once we have more interest in the project, then we, we don't mind doing partnerships with other similar companies that are operating already all over the world uh, doing this kind of retrofitting projects and they already have existing client bases. So it's more like a matter of, uh, you know, selling the idea of the tokenization for these uh, plant hosts by the existing infrastructure of each company. You're not planning to scale using other companies who are going to put up PV panels. You only want to use your company. No, um, we're, we're, no, that's precisely what I said. Uh, we're going, we are open to use, any company and any partnerships. We're just gonna kick off with uh, with Max's company because we already have that. So that will be the easy way to go, and we, we can easily uh, test uh, test uh, how it works. And uh, you know, there's a, a much lower risk. And this way, we have something to show for the for the other other companies that hey, we have a working idea, and uh, if they're interested in it, when we we can work together. Planning to do the video based on the like this first ICO is equity based and the other ones will be based on the projects. So what we could do, and again, that is hypothetical, is that um, we are, that we look for really, really small, small scale equity investment upfront. So I'm talking about 100,000, 200,000, maybe 500,000, just to get the first initial rooftop going, just to prove that the technology is working, that all the token structure works, that the voting mechanism works. Um, stuff like this and then once we have uh, the first project working we can then open for uh, bigger rounds as we go and as we start doing uh, the other projects so it's quite modular we can either stop scaling or we can continue scaling um, once the uh, once the PV panels are built it's pretty much passive uh, we don't have to do that much you have to do some maintenance some cleaning but that's minimal um, so we are quite modular in this approach. But yes, the initial round can come from private equity. Um, but again, I don't think we'll have problems raising 100,000 or 500,000 um, just because yeah, we, we, we have quite good connections to, to private equity uh, investors. All right, yeah, that's a pretty small scale you guys are talking about, so. At least I was the first round, yes. Uh, we, we want to scale, uh, yeah, to, to several megawatts. Um, but again, first round, small steps. And as we have the MVP, as we have proven everything, then we want to keep going. Yeah. Right. And also, like something to consider is that this is a way to inspire in, uh, investor confidence because it's a widely known fact that 99% of ICOs are money grabs and uh, don't, they don't have an actual product. And just by showing that, hey, you know, we're not trying to raise 20 million here. And it, it will be hard to justify where we're going to put that money. Like that's uh, well, a lot of ICOs end up with too much money. Like that sounds like a positive problem, but actually it's, it's, uh, it's not very good. It doesn't look very good to a lot of investors. It looks like, you know, like they grabbed, uh, they, did, they sold out for money and a lot of, a lot of projects do. So we're not planning on doing that. So we, we want to, our books to be fully open and we are raising just the amount of money we need to uh, cover our expenses and get the project started and hey, you know, build from there. And I think that's a strong foundation for the future. And we're, we're looking at long term here. Like we're not lo looking to uh, run, run, the, run the project down in one or two years. We're looking for a, a much bigger project. Yeah, I understood that. So you guys are also looking to maybe do like actual power plants as well, like uh, putting it up as a, as a large scale, like uh, solar projects as well? Yeah, there are, there are two different types of project. Number one is rooftop retrofitting, um, which is, uh, you can either do that on private households with like 100 kilowatt peak, um, or you can do it for like larger logistics centers or other large buildings uh, that you can maybe put up to like 750 um, kilowatt hour peak. Um, but if you want to do really, really large projects, um, let's say bigger than one megawatt or peak, um, you will most likely have to use a, a empty space, so just an empty field. Um, we have projects like this as well. We've built some of those already. Um, one interesting project that we have is a, a 4.3 megawatt hour peak project that is a PV 
park that is on top of a lake, uh, which is interesting. So the PV panels are floating on top of the water, uh, which makes them very efficient just because you uh, have cooling from the uh, lower side from the water, uh, which is a cool project. Uh, we just visited it a couple weeks ago. It was, it's interesting. Um, however, we, uh, so yeah, there are, are several different projects that we can do. And I wanted to ask about the sparking and this, uh, the other thing, like, I don't, I don't understand how you guys are kind of structuring that. Uh, so maybe you can explain that a little bit better. Let me take this one because it's, uh, it was kind of like my idea. So the, the fun functionality of the token, like this, this uh, stems from, from the back, back when we were working, uh, it was a little bit of different outline on the project and, uh, we were trying to find a way to not classify as uh, security in terms of regulation but uh, since then we moved on but this is still uh, an important uh, mechanism for the voting so this is a way to inspire a long-term holding and uh, of the tokens and to reward those who believe in the project and they want to stake their uh, tokens and they're not looking to make a quick buck on the secondary market which i believe is the majority at the moment uh, speculators so this is a way to inspire non-speculators to actually uh, get in and participate so by sparking, I'm not sure, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with how Steam works, like how Steam uh, powering up works. This is essentially the same. So for, uh, this is like powering up your token. So you, you lock up your token with our platform and in exchange you will get voting rights for the projects and you will also get an elevated uh, dividends percentage. So uh, you, you get to participate in uh, deciding about the projects, the future projects, and in, in exchange for locking up your tokens uh, and stabilizing the network that way because uh, it decreases the volatility of the existing tokens on the market uh, because they're locked up and, and you will get, uh, you get a, a bigger dividend as well. So that's sparking up and the sparking up is just uh, uh, something I, I, I thought of when, when you're generating uh, electricity. So, you know, like electrons and stuff like that. So it's just a marketing marketing term. It means staking. So staking your tokens will give you these rights. And uh, to fizzle down is, the, is the, you know, the opposite of staking. So taking a stake out and liquidating. So it's just a marketing terms. But of course, uh, subject to change anytime. But this is basically a, the, the basic concept of, uh, of the voting system and, and reward system for the, for the long-term holders. Yeah, there are several interesting parts in here. And um, number one, we can separate between short-term speculators who hold this just for the profit sake, which is fine. Um, but we can we also have the second group, uh, which are the long-term holders who really want to participate in the system. Um, they lock their tokens up for the long term, which means uh, liquidity of the entire uh, money supply is limited and capped, which helps price on one hand. Um, but also, uh, because it takes such a long time to fizzle down to, to actually get back to the capital again, you are much more incentivized to think for the long term and, uh, and yeah, try, to, uh, try to vote on projects that actually make sense in the long run as well, uh, not just short term profits. Um, yeah, so uh, this, yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty much that. Yeah. Yeah, the, the fissioning down part and, and Steam works the same way. Powering down Steam uses, uh, I think it's three months period that you need to take to, uh, to power down, which uh, to me is a little bit long. Uh, let's say that you, uh, you have uh, some, some money locked up in a tokens and your life uh, situation changes and you need to liquidate. So three months can be a little bit too long. So we're talking about a much uh, um, shorter time. But essentially that's the idea. So once you start fizzling down, uh, your tokens will release uh, during a certain period of time to prevent the market from dumping, like uh, it, it panic selling. Like let's say there's a, some kind of FUD or uh, bad news or something happens or uh, you know, a team member leaves the pr uh, project and uh, people, investors lose faith, like what happens all the time in the market. So market crashes and then uh, it, it uh, snowballs and there's a sell-off and that can really hurt the project. So this is a way to uh the token holders to help keep up the network and keep up the token price and uh, yeah the, the downside is that if you should you liquidate you will have to take the, this kind of like a consideration period let's say maybe one week two weeks could be uh something reasonable 
and during which time your tokens will be released, like let's say daily, uh, proportional to how much you want to fizzle down. Like you don't have to fizzle down all, all the way. You can also fizzle down like 50% or something like that. So, so you're saying give them voting power and also how do you justify their, like uh, how do you measure what, what they're inputting? Uh, that's a good question. We are planning on this uh, kind of like a, a community pipeline, which will be like an interface, maybe in the wallet or a, or a web interface that uh, they can use where they also spark up their tokens and then they will get access to the pipeline, which, which uh, is going to fill up with pre-approved project by the team at this moment. And of course, uh, this may change, but this is the original idea that we would uh, kind of scout, scout this and apply in then and of course the team will be uh, holding a portion of tokens so the team will also have voting rights and the voting rights will be proportional to how much you stake so um, that's basically and, and it will be uh, based on a blockchain so the votes are immutable so that kind of like uh, lends cred credibility for the whole, whole system and I think it will work uh, because it's it's been done in different projects already so do you not think that in a project where you need to build and uh, there's a lot there's like instruction period and there's uh you know there's more involved than you know just a few weeks so do you not think that the staking should be longer if they stake if they spark up they should be uh more longer term invested to be able to get rights in the project yeah th that's a good point um well number one the construction period is rather short um especially if it's like a smaller scale project that takes two to three days and and you're done uh, of course it depends for the larger parks um but then on the other hand how long should the staking down or fizzling down period be that's a really good question and also, there are like it's um game theory and economics in here um and the correct time is is tricky I'm tending towards a bit longer than just two weeks, like one month, two months. Uh, but of course, we can we can discuss this and and see where everything goes. Yeah, this is not decided. Yeah. But yeah, uh, to add to add to ta that, um, we were thinking also to reward ho a long term sparkers. So you would kind of get a, um, you would get a, a little bit more dividends the longer you spark up. So there will be a timer uh, that gi gives you kind of like a 1x or 1.5x or 2x or whatever we decide will be the maximum bonus you can get by uh, the longer you spark up. And then if you sh should you fizzle down, you lose that bonus and you start from the scratch if you spark up again. So that will be, uh, contribute to the game theory part so that it will incentivize you not to liquidate unless you absolutely have to. Yeah, that sounds really yeah, and, and, and this uh, bonus or the multiplier is uh, or might be in a form of an S-curve. Uh, so let's say the first week you only get uh, like 1% or 2% extra dividends. Uh, then after or the time between two months and uh, two weeks and let's say three months, uh, you start getting like more and more and more. And then, you know, you have the other elbow. And after, let's say, six months, you get the maximum amount of additional dividends and or additional voting rights, which might be like 100% uh, more dividends as the non-sparkers. Um, might, might be more, might be less. Again, game theory and everything, the exact numbers. Uh, it, it's not easy to calculate those, and we, we have to do some more work here. Um, but yeah, that's, that's in general what we want to do. You wanted to say something earlier? Um, yes, um, I wanted to say something about how to um, do this, how to make sure that the people have it and um, to keep it secure. And something to consider is maybe the ADO wallet, where you as a team um, already can do air drops and pay dividends and something like this only to active members. <laughs> um, and maybe there's a possibility on ADO too to see um, how long the tokens have been staked to the network and pay a dividend depending on how long the um, ADO wallet is filled up with ENX. All right, I got a better idea of things. Uh, there's still a lot to work out, obviously. 
also I'd like to see uh, like more on the marketing. Uh, what's the strategy? Like, I don't know the, I know you guys are studying, but it'd be good to see like, uh, I think in my experience and anything you launch in startups and anything you do, uh, the more experienced team you have, the more likely it is to be a success uh, and also to to grow faster. Um, of course, you know, it's really good because you guys are motivated. Um, I, I'm just, you know, I, the best results I see are from rock star teams. And uh, it might be good to get somebody in there on the marketing side who's has more experience and then to lead you guys. Uh, and then, uh, you know, they move on after this growth stage, of course. I don't know what you guys have planned or who you're sourcing at the moment, but you said uh, things you need right now, according to Nico, I think we're developers mm -hmm. and, and the marketing side. Is that correct? Yeah, so a, a couple points here again, all, all good points. Um, we, we, I mean, we have people like Jonas, Felix, and Betty who are uh, I mean, qu quite experienced, I would say, in, in marketing in general. Um, and as I said earlier, we want to do a uh, like the, this modular approach on raising the funds, uh, which means we don't need to have like the uh, super overhyped uh, campaign uh, with all the commercials and clickbait and stuff like that. I, th I think it would be better to uh, do like more the guerrilla marketing tactic. Nevertheless, it's important and, and like marketing tactics is something that we could discuss uh, for much longer. Um, but yes, we need help and we uh, are gladly taking help. And I don't know if we talked about this already, but we are a open source company, um, which means basically we are a... a loose organization where you can join if you want to if you really want to contribute you can gladly do so everything we do is open source not just on the code base but also on like the work in progress and and uh, if, if you want to commit something you can um, and then if let's say after uh, a couple months or years you want to move on and do something else you can gladly do this as well I mean we're voluntarily here um, and I think that's quite powerful um, so we could definitely work something out if you uh, if you are interested or want to join us uh, or at least if you want to stay up to date um i mean gladly join the the membership team uh, uh telegram channel um and uh, if you want to contribute you can gladly do so if i may add to that uh yeah i don't think we need uh, help in marketing per se but we do need community builders uh, like Querela style, um, which I be, which is what I've been doing. Like I'm in charge of like communications, so I'm I have like these two events lined up that I'm gonna go talk about NX, and I'm doing online community building right now. And uh, yeah, the community has been pretty responsive. I'm I'm pretty happy with the interest I've generated so far. And the the marketing thing in the beginning, the most important thing would be to be able to raise awareness, to go to these big events, to talk about our project. That's like, that will be the key. So that's, that's definitely something where we could use help because I'm only one man. And while I am at the moment contributing almost full time to this project, uh, with course, because I can at the moment, uh, it might change because you know, things change. So uh, it, it, it will not, it, it will be a good idea to have somebody else besides me doing this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to get a good feel. And I think today you guys have given me a really good feel of what's happening. Um, and from there, yeah, we can do further discussion. Uh, but of course, like right now I'm pretty, pretty much free agent. Um, I have one startup that I'm, I'm guiding at the moment. Uh, other than that, I'm just doing consulting work. And uh, if there's, if there's opportunity to contribute on this, then of course, I think it's a great idea of uh, democratizing power. That's uh, really good. I think one of the, the things to know at the moment would be like sizing up uh, what other people are doing. Like for instance, you didn't know about the WePower, but kind of knowing what they're doing and uh, seeing how you can improve on what they're doing. And that would be 
uh, really good for making a, a, you know, if you're trying to grow the community, you want to get as many people into it as possible and uh, having advantages over other uh, communities would be, would be one way of doing that. Yeah, definitely. We want to get feedback as soon as possible from as many people as possible. Uh, that's why we decided to go public uh, with like the official Telegram channel and, and the website that is coming soon uh, with the early version of the one pager. Um, just, you know, getting the conversation started, getting feedback and improving, starting to improve on it wherever we can. Um, and we are in contact with several people uh, who are in interested in, in contributing. Um, I've talked personally with the solar ICO uh, uh, founder that was back in like uh, August or something earlier, 2017. Uh, we talked about uh, doing this and, and we stayed in contact ever since then. Uh, we're, uh, we're in contact with Imurgo, that's the venture capital fund behind the Cardano uh, blockchain, the ADA cryptocurrency, um, for a potential partnership here. Uh, they got two developers working on a a decentralized smart con a smart grid uh, system for PV power, um, and they might join the team as well. However, that is like far in the future. Um, but yeah, we're looking to improving wherever we can. Well, it's really nice to meet you guys. I'm sorry, I don't have my uh, I'm on my phone, so I uh, I'm still getting over this illness, and I'm not too keen on. Showing you guys my face at the moment, <laughs> but next, yeah, that's all right. That's all right. There's time. Uh, we have the. We are going to have a. I think we are going to have another call tomorrow, I believe. And you know, if if you if you uh, have some suggestions, ideas, you're always welcome to suggest a call at the Telegram, and we'll just whoever is available will will be happy to jump in. You know, like uh, it's not that official here, obviously. Yeah, well, I'm really, I'm really uh, happy to see some young guys with great ambition, because you guys are, have the energy to pull this off. And uh, well, it's really nice to meet you guys, and I uh, really look forward to to uh, seeing how we can work together. Thanks for joining in, man. It was a pleasure. Yeah, hey, th thanks for yeah being interested. Thanks for listening to us. Thanks for giving some really good feedback. It was really cool. Um, that goes out to you, Thomas, as well. Um, I really think uh, you've, you've done quite quite much already, uh, and you're quite experienced in this field. Uh, so as, as I said earlier, if you, if you want to join, if you want to do this, if you want to be part, um, and uh, even if you only have a couple hours per week that you can spare, if you want to, gladly come in, uh, give your feedback, uh, and we can see what you can do and how we can improve this. And thanks for joining. Well, yeah, thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you guys. Let's uh here. All right. Uh bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye.